Hey everybody, it's Etho. Today I had some big plans in mind. I was gonna change the world. Quite literally, actually. I, I, I wanted to do some building, you see. But the problem is, I quickly realized I did not have the materials to do the building I wanted to do. So, what did I do? Well, I ran off to go get them. So yeah, it seems we are pretty low on oak wood in our world at the moment, or else possibly I just misplaced it somewhere and I can't find it. I do that a lot as well. <laughs> uh, but I also needed to get some azalea leaves, so I started growing some azalea trees and chopping them down, and then, oh, it kind of hit me, like, if people knew. If people knew, they would call me out on this. They, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm being a sucker here, right? Um, so I, I started to panic a little bit, and after growing a few trees, it's like, okay, we gotta make an automatic farm. And actually, let's just do a quick little crash course on azalea trees here so we can get more familiar with their basic, uh, game mechanics, okay? So, as most of you probably know, you can bone meal moss, and it will convert stone into moss as well, and that's also where azalea trees come from, the saplings. <laughs> now, you'll notice, like, some of these are moss carpets, some are grass... Some are the actual azalea plants. So I think it's a 15% chance uh, when it tries to create some sort of plant, it will choose to be either a flowering or a non-flowering azalea plant, okay? But you'll see not always do you get a plant growing. Sometimes it just stays as air when you when you bone meal the moss, right? So I think the actual rate might be of one in nine is the number I've heard. The cool thing about these trees is you can take stone from a stone generator, made out of thin air basically, convert the stone into moss, and then when you grow the azalea tree, it creates the rooted dirt underneath. It replaces the moss with the rooted dirt. So you're essentially creating rooted dirt out of, out of nothing. Now the really cool thing about the azalea trees is you can actually fully automate their growth and harvest. So what you do, uh, bone meal in this dispenser up here does nothing. So you need two dispensers. You need one below facing the moss. When you hit that one, it will grow the, the plants on the top of the moss. And again, that one in nine chance that there's going to be an azalea plant in front of this dispenser. We got unlucky this time. We got an air block. But if we try again... Oh yeah, this grass needs to be removed before it'll try growing again. Okay. And the moss needs to be removed there. And, you know, you got to get lucky to get it to show up. Oh, not in the right spot. <laughs> hey, look, let's just plant one there. Yeah. So one in nine chance it'll appear there, right? And then you can hit that with the bone meal and it'll grow the tree. Another important detail about the azalea trees is they seem to be very easy to grow. Like if you compare them to oak saplings, which were like traditionally the easiest tree to grow in the game. One, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. You know, it, they grow very easily, but azaleas seem to almost always grow the first time or second time one 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 two a couple other interesting things about these saplings is they don't grow naturally you have to hit them with bone meal and when they try to grow they check a three by three area above themselves for any blocks obscuring their growth so if there's brick in a three by three area above them no matter how many times i hit this with the bone meal it will not grow because these bricks are in the way but Oh yeah, and even if there's just one, it, it still won't grow, because it's within its area. If it's a block higher, or a few blocks higher, it won't grow. But it ignores any that are on the base level with the sapling. So these ones here are fine, and they'll be able to grow. And the trees tend to grow crooked, and at most they'll get five blocks tall. Alright, very good. So now we know how they work. Let's actually get to making a farm for them, right? Well, not quite just yet. You see, the plan is we want to develop this area, this cavern. And it's a death trap, okay? So what I need to do, actually, is, like, survive and torch it up. For, just for now, like, we might get rid of these torches later if they're not very atmospheric. But in order to actually work down in this area and develop it, I need to survive somehow. <laughs> oh, man! Uh, so, yeah, first step, light it up. Now, thankfully, with this update... We don't need as much lighting. We don't need to get to light level 8 to stop mobs from spawning. We just need light level 1 or higher. We gotta get more torches. And I'm not really aiming for perfection on the lighting here. I just kind of want it to be tolerable. <laughs> I can deal with a couple mobs. I just can't deal with like 50 at a time. Okay, how's that look now that we got it lit up? Did it ruin the aesthetics, the looks of the place? A little bit. 
if I want to ever go to a new area and develop it, what I have learned about myself is it has to have farms or some reason of visiting that area. Because if I never see it, I never think, oh, I should do this and that to it and this and that. And it never gets developed, right? So we got to put farms down in this area. Some reason to visit this area. Uh, for example, there is a geode here. There's a geode over there. <laughs> and there's even a geode right up there. There's a triple geode here. So I think we should make this our amethyst uh, farming area. Another thing I would like to do with this area is have a river that runs kind of down the middle here. Maybe a couple little waterfalls on the way as well. And then we'll split it into two sides. So amethyst farming on that side. And then I think we're going to put the tree farming right over here. All right, so let's get to it here. I think the first thing we're going to do is just kind of level out the ground a little bit so it's easier to work with. And then after we're done building the farm, we can uh, rough it up a bit more in the future, you know, <laughs> get it looking more natural. I don't know what's going on, but I, like, never have space. <laughs> My shulker boxes are always full. It's driving me nuts. Probably because I'm carrying, like, boats and tropical fish on me and a random carrot. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Okay, it might be my fault a little bit. I was looking at the vines here and I was like, wait a minute, how are they that color? Because I think we're underneath a desert right now. And I think lush biomes, or lush caves, actually has its own biome color to it, despite, like, being in a desert up above. Oh, snappers. All right, guys, let's build our azalea tree farm. And I actually worked this out in creative already. I got it uh, working pretty good. I spent more than the usual amount of time on it. So I figured let's build it together. I'll show you how it works. Uh, a couple cool things about it as well. And then you'll be able to build it if you want to yourself. So this is how we start it. This is a sticky piston, right? And then we leave one space for a wood log. And then this is going to represent our stone line coming from our stone generator. And you want to get it to the point where the piston can't push anymore. So this is 12 blocks long, right? And then we're going to start setting up our stone generator here. And basically, when lava flows downward onto water, it creates stone. If water flows sideways into lava, it creates cobblestone. And I don't know if it's just me, but this was the hardest part of making the whole farm, to be honest with you. <laughs> making the stone generator was a nightmare. Okay, let's seal this up so the water can't flow out. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the deal is with these things. Like, they'll work. You leave the area, you come back, and it's the stone generator starts making cobblestone. The, the water and lava get out of sync with each other. And I just could not figure out what to do about it until I tried a bunch of different things. And eventually, I just kind of stumbled on something that works. So what we're going to do is get a chain of repeaters here. Set all of these to four, except for this one, we're going to keep it one. And then when the stone passes by here from the stone generator, it's going to tell it to create another one at just the right timing. All right. There they come. And you'll notice like as soon as the stone gets created, it gets pushed here. Uh-huh. Yeah. So this is kind of like a double function thing. It acts as a clock for the stone generator, but it also seems to synchronize the water and lava so that they don't produce uh, cobblestone on you, even when the chunks unload and reload, which was a huge head scratcher for me. <laughs> uh -huh. So I had another big problem with stone generators as well. Sometimes the piston wouldn't push the stone when the chunks would unload on me. Like if it happened at just the right time where the chunks unloaded right when the piston was supposed to push, it would ignore the redstone signal it received and you would find a piece of stone in front of the generator that it didn't push. So my solution for that problem is a countdown timer where basically if you leave the chunks and come back at just that right time where it'll fail, uh, this constantly refreshes the countdown timer until the piston kind of messes up. Then this will go off, the torch will come on, and then it'll try push one more time. And yeah, the goal of these safety systems is we want to be able to run this farm automatically, like turn it on. Be free to move around our world and not worry about chunks unloading on us and breaking the farm. We want it to just run all the time without like, hey, we're in the area, we have to turn the farm on. Stay in the area for it to work. And then like when we're leaving the area, we got to make sure we shut it off. Otherwise, it's going to break on us. <laughs> That's not That wouldn't be very good. Uh, so hopefully what I figured out here will we'll keep that from happening. Yeah, so we go for six sticky pistons in total, each with a log in front. The log thing is a trick with tree tree growing. Um, remember the three by three rule with the azalea trees? 
when they grow here and they check the three by three above them, they ignore logs as one of the, the things that will stop them from growing. So this is a way we can push the tree that grows here without needing a double extender with the, the pistons. Then we run our redstone line up there and we're going to add one more slab at the top here because otherwise a log will eventually grow here and cut the wire. This prevents a log from appearing in the spot right there. Are you ready for the logic part of the farm? This is the, the tough part of the farm, okay? Uh, yeah, I worked really hard at compacting this. I hope you appreciate it, even if you don't understand it. Uh, here we go. Okay, so the goal is, by the way, to get the moss to spread to this block and then grow the tree on top of it. So what we do is we bone meal the moss with this dispenser. It's facing towards it, right? We also need to remove the grass that grows on top of the moss. Otherwise, it can't grow anymore, which means I need a piston. I totally forgot about that part. Okay, that goes right on top of the dispenser. It breaks the, the grass that spawns on top there. Easy peasy, right? Well, then what we got to do is we got to take the observer. This updates when the block moves, right? And then it goes to the block here with the redstone dust on top. This activates both the piston and the dispenser. And it seems like the dispenser triggers before the piston for just update order reasons. Uh-huh. Then we take the signal from there. It goes across over in this way. Also, we need to grow the tree that's here using another dispenser, which is over here which gets powered by this as well. We also need to place blocks over top of the stone here. Otherwise, this will convert to moss. We need three of them because that's how far it extends to. Now, what we got to do is take the signal from here and send it to there uh, while also sending the signal back this way with just the right timing so that this triggers more than once. We want it to trigger twice, okay? And then uh, what do we do here? I don't even know. Uh, no, I do know. I think we want three repeaters. This one's set to four, this one at one, this one to four. So when this repeater updates, it triggers this and gets another pulse to the dispenser growing the tree. What else? Oh yeah, we want to get another pulse to this one because remember, sometimes you get air blocks even after you bone meal this. So to improve our chances of us getting something to grow there, we're going to trigger it twice using another delayed pulse going to it. And that's it. That's the tree farm. So it should be able to grow trees now. Uh, let's give it a try here. We got these loaded with bone meal. To start this farm, if it ever gets stuck, like if it runs out of bone meal or you run out of TNT, you got to break that block right there where the trees grow. And then we just send a pulse to this to get it started again. All right. Yeah, we got a tree farm. <laughs> Did I mess up? Let's find out. Oh, I got moss in the area here, so it's spreading everywhere. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I gotta remove that. Oh, we got our first trees. Uh-huh. So as soon as the stone gets pushed here, it gets converted to moss, and then it, a couple plants grow here. It tries twice. Oh, there's another azalea. Awesome. Okay, so it seems to be working. I just shut it off for now. We got a few more things left to build here, but this is what it does. It basically creates a long strip of wood here and uh, the rooted dirt underneath. And then we gotta blow that up and collect it in a collection system. So that's what this is over here. It's uh, five wide. We're gonna put water here, fill this up. And it is exactly like the tree grows here. So it's a one, two, and then a third block is where the water is. That travels eight blocks to the end here. And then we're gonna put another water source. Uh, it doesn't really matter where, I'll put it there. And then that's going to go to just a hopper for now until I do something more fancy. <laughs> uh, hopper. It'll put the logs and stuff into a chest so that we don't lose it. Like so. And then I'm just going to put a trap door uh, over here. All right. So that should pick up the stuff that lands in the water here. Nice and easy. Next up here, we're going to set up a TNT system for harvesting the wood from the tree farm. And while building this farm, originally I had the TNT system up in the air like most farms, and I came up with a pretty cool trick, I think. Um, like normally you got to drop the TNT at least eight blocks so it doesn't blow up the dispenser it comes from. Oh, I should not have placed this here. <laughs> Wait, is that the right spot? Yeah, that's the right spot, I think. Okay, I'm going to just put a piece of brick underneath there. Yeah, check this out. So what you do, you put your TNT in here. You put a stair on top. Water. And then when the TNT ejects here, the water carries it right to the end. 
And that way you don't need to drop it. You don't need to run redstone up, up there. You don't need to shield the redstone from the blast. It's all just so much simpler. We just activate it from underneath. Okay, I just put a button here so we can manually trigger it. I'll show you how it works. So, yeah, up comes the TNT. The water carries it to the end. And the water shields the dispenser from getting blown up as well. And then all the logs land into the water stream and up in here. And the dirt. Okay. So we don't want to trigger this every single time a tree grows, though. So we got to add some kind of counting system for our farm as well. Here's how we're going to do that. We're going to take the signal from here. So whenever a tree gets grown, this gets triggered. And then we're going to send that down to a counter. I'm going to put two droppers facing each other. Like so. We'll trigger this one by putting a block above. The observer will trigger it that way. And then we're going to go down here in the corner of our, our water system. And put a comparator. Pull the signal from here. Then we put redstone here. That'll go back this way. And I don't have blocks. <laughs> I'm going to carry the signal this way. And then we're going to add a repeater. Set to four. This will go to a... I think I want a sticky piston here. With a block on top. No, not a block. I want observer. Yeah, we're going to set up an observer clock here. So you know how observer clocks work. They... Oh. Yeah. If you have two observers facing each other, they constantly pulse. See how they're ticking like that? So the piston's going to push this up, and then it's going to trigger and send the items in this dropper back to that one. Our goal with this is when five items enter this dropper, we want to send them back to that dropper to reset it, and then also shoot out a TNT here. And this is a bit of a janky uh, counter I made just for this tree farm, so it's a little... A little weird. <laughs> uh, put that in subtract mode, and then we're going to fill this up with uh, four stacks of items plus 16, roughly. Uh-huh. Uh, if you do copy this uh, counter, just keep in mind it will only work for up to five items max. Count up to five maximum. Okay. And 16. Okay. So now, what's going to happen is when we put swords in here, or an item that doesn't stack, five of them... It should reset. Where's my last one? I only made four, apparently. Oh, no, it's in my inventory. Okay, here we go. That pops up, and then those items go back into that one, and it sends a signal here, right? So now we're going to take that signal and send it over to the TNT system. So to do that, it just so happens those five swords, the signal reaches exactly to here. <laughs> well, it's almost like I planned that, right? And then uh, we, we're going to run a redstone torch up here. Target block so it connects to it. And then our dispenser with the TNT is there. We run away. And then we're free to cover all that stuff up. And it doesn't look too bad, right? It's a pretty clean presentation to the farm. Uh... Yeah, I thought we were going to get this done 10 minutes tops, right? <laughs> yeah, we're still going here. Uh, it's a good thing we didn't uh, design this together, too. Or we'd be looking at 20, 20 episodes on this thing, I think. Oh, man. Don't worry, you're going to get an extra long episode today, guys. Uh, I thought we were going to get this done a lot faster than we are. I still want to build some stuff. Okay, so you'll notice like moss is shooting out here and, and getting collected. So we can either drop that into water to collect it, or we can put a hopper. If we want to compost it, we can compost it. And then reclaim some of the bone meal that way for the farm. I actually want to keep this moss and stuff it's creating, because I don't have a moss farm built in our Let's Play just yet. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be storing this stuff for now. Oh, all right. Something like that should work. And then we want to make sure, like, this stuff doesn't fly everywhere. <laughs> so what we're going to do, I'm going to have a nice viewing window with glass here. We can put glass there. But then remember the 3x3 three three rule. We can't put glass here. Oh, first, first batch. Because uh, then it'll stop the trees from growing. So we can put leaves, though. So I'm going to put leaves there. Just to keep everything contained. All right. And then we can cover that back up. And if we ever need to break that block to restart the farm, we can just flip this trap door, break it, and flip it back. Okay, then... Uh, what else here? Yeah, let's add a, a system for the bone meal on this. So we can run hoppers to this dispenser. And... Then a chest, double chest. 
And then I think we can do hoppers here. We gotta run bow meal to this dispenser as well. So hopper, chest, and chest. And this is outside of the range of the TNT, just barely. <laughs> uh, okay, and then that will get another double chest here. And then a hopper facing into that. Double chest here, and they kind of meet together. And then when you fill this chest with bow meal, it'll funnel to both sides, and you got a nice storage. And you can add more chests if you want more storage to that. Now remember, we're also making like moss and, and seeds and the the plants and stuff over here from this uh, one as well. So if we want to collect that, we can trap it with leaves here as well. They'll kind of stay contained that way. And if we put a hot fur minecart underneath that moss block, we can pick up most of the stuff. And with that, we are actually done building the tree farm. But I just want to talk about a couple quick things. Again, if you want to restart the tree farm, if it stops for some reason, the block's here, you got to break that. And then you run over here, hit the button. Uh, I think I might add a proper way of shutting this down. For right now, if I ever want to shut it down, this is what I do, I just break a repeater. <laughs> Not the most fancy thing, I, I wait for this thing to shut off. And then I'm free to put it back, and it, it's shut down. So this runs totally automatically, but there is a semi AFK mode you can use with it as well. If you want, you can kind of stand inside there and hold right click with some azalea trees. If you want to grow them quickly, you know. Ooh, that scared me. Although I might be within the range of the blast standing here. But yeah, this is a way you can get it going quickly. Doesn't always grow them, it usually does. Okay, anyways. Oh, walk away. <laughs> Alright, uh, the other thing though, this is very important to me guys, okay? So it's running, it's working fine. I'm gonna leave the world and rejoin it a few times and just make sure it doesn't create cobblestone because I tried very hard to make sure it doesn't break when you leave the world or leave the chunks. Let's go here. Let's see if it's still running. Please, please don't be broken. <laughs> All right, still making, still making stone. I'm gonna try that a few times. Uh, why? Why? Oh, it failed to push this time, and then the the countdown went off. Okay, and it restarted. All right, well, I tried relogging about 20 times here, and this thing gets triggered a lot, actually. I thought it was only occasionally that was going to happen, but no, it's like almost every time I join, uh, the piston fails to push. Not entirely sure why, but that's what happens, and then this thing saves it. Got cobblestone once, and I am extremely disappointed by that. I tried so hard to fix that problem. It's very rare it's happening, but still it is happening, and it will require me to break like 20 blocks of cobblestone to fix it and the farm will stop working if it happens so it's a really annoying problem i don't know how to fix it so if you guys know let me know all right awesome let's move on here so we got our tree farm built it's good to go and uh before i can collect some wood from it though i do need to gather a bunch of bone meal to feed it at, at some point i really want to build like a giant massive uh moss farm in our world to like mass produce bone meal but until then this is my best source of, of bone meal I want to take a quick little second here just to talk about the theming or kind of the lore of our world here. So when we look around the man cave, right, it's got almost a, a clean look to it. Like all on the path here, it's nice and clean. There's no grass. It's like somebody's living here. Somebody's taking care of it. It's well manicured just off the beaten path. You know, it's a bit more rough. There's there's shrubs and stuff that haven't been taken care of. So yeah, for this area underneath the man cave, I really like the idea of keeping it overgrown like this. Like this was what the man cave was before we conquered it kind of idea. And uh, we're going to try to develop the roughness a bit. Like we don't want it to be so scattered and undefined. <laughs> we want to try to add some definition to the roughness, I guess, is the, the goal. Uh, the idea that kind of comes to me when I look at this is Terraria jungles, right? I'm really getting like a Terraria jungle feeling for this area. And I want to sort of develop that as the theme. So for for example, imagine we set up a honey farm, like a bee's nest or something, representing the, the bee fight in Terraria, right? But instead of like having these pools of water, we replace the water with honey, maybe. And then like the clay with the honeycomb. I think that could look cool. 
have it like dripping from the bee nest and then inside is where all the bees are and they're making honey and stuff. Yeah, I want to try pull some of the elements from Terraria and use them as our decoration ideas for down here. <laughs> so for example as well, like we could put heart containers in places. You know those those rooms with the treasure chests in? We could use that as like some buildings for down here. And I want to put like a couple random... Uh, Ooh, it's very dark around here. I want to put a couple of random plantera bulbs down here as well. I think that could look cool. Add some pink to the terrain. I think that would look nice. Uh, let's space this a bit more. Actually, this is going to be a big bulb, isn't it? <laughs> That's good. We want like big elements though, right? We don't want everything so small. It needs to be like, oh, that I, I know what that is. It's a plantera bulb when you look at it kind of thing. Uh, round that out. And I'm going to fill this in with the, the pink terracotta. And hopefully this looks cool. We probably got to rough this up a bit more. And then... Uh, let's go up more. Yeah, let's go up one more and then we'll do the... We'll bring it in a bit. How's that looking? Let's take a... Let's take a step back. Huh? That's not bad, right? <laughs> well, we could do something like that, maybe. Uh, I did bring some leaves. Let's try to decorate the bottom a bit more. But anyways, we'll probably have to get more into that next episode. I wanted to do it this episode, but uh, timing, yeah. Uh, because I also planned on doing some stuff at Sandy City here. We're going to go through and do a bunch of upgrades to it. And hopefully try to build another house here. And uh, just do a, do a few things. So starting with the walls, okay? I I really struggled building these walls. <laughs> like I wanted to add some color to them. I wanted to do something with them besides just having them all sandstone. So I did this green and wood thing and it, it's like, okay, it's a little bit on the busy side though. Um, I've never really super liked it. Still not super happy with my up upgrade with it here. I want like brown sandstone or something. I think is the dream here, but it just doesn't exist. But I like this more than, uh, than this. And I think it works better as a background look. It's a lot cleaner. So I'm going through here and we're updating all the walls to the new style. Sandy City has three of these gate things around it and I still really like them. I think they turned out okay, but uh, I wanted to add some extra detail to them. So I'm going to put some uh, campfires uh, up like this. And I think that'll be good. It'll add some animation. It'll add lighting and just give uh, a bit of life to the area as well be able to see a bit of smoke and I'm gonna do that on both sides of it as well like we'll put them here too I am noticing a couple odd blocks missing every every so often as well I've had a, a few creeper blasts over the years that I've fixed and sometimes I miss blocks when I fix it and uh, yeah there we go all right so this path here is a mixture of birch planks we got some upside down sandstone stairs to get the textured uh, sandstone look and then there's some smooth pieces and sand mixed in with the path and since uh, I originally built this we have gotten this stripped wood in the game I might try mix some of the birch in and we also have azalea leaves in the game now and I think these are gonna be huge like so so nice for any desert build or savanna build because um, well you kind of got like two options you can go for the the dry dying look to a desert area or you can go for the beautiful oasis look and that's kind of what I want here so I'm gonna replace all these uh, leaves here with azaleas we'll get a nice brighter green okay a couple things over at the blacksmith area here yes iron makes sense at a blacksmith true true <laughs> it doesn't add any color though uh, so I want to put emeralds here it, it'll be a jewelry smith yeah and also I don't really like the red nether brick I think it just came out and I put it here and uh, yeah it's, it's a little weird I'm a pretty big fan of the beehive texture. It works great as a flooring material, but it also works good in a lot of other situations. They kind of look like crates a little bit. So they're good for just like decorating cities, putting them around. People traditionally always use note blocks for that, but I think these work a little bit better. Okay, so there's a spot over here that's kind of interesting. I think I originally planned on putting some animals in here or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's, it's not doing anything right now, though. Uh, I found out if we dig down here... It actually goes to a pretty good spot in the man cave and we could probably put an elevator to connect the two together because right now there's no way to get to the sandy city from the man cave uh-huh so we got the musical mushroom farm over here and then if we go past if we want to develop further this way we can connect an elevator it'll go up here 
to Sandy City. So this is going to come as a little bit of a surprise to you, but you know that potion brewing thing we have over here that gives us night vision? Uh, yeah, I never actually finished it. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. It happens though sometimes, believe it or not. Sometimes I don't actually finish things. Uh, I'm going to do a little tweaking on this thing, see if we can get it looking better. And, and by not finished, I mean uh, there's like redstone exposed and everything here. Yeah, it, it's not the not the cleanest look. So maybe we'll put some clay, kind of like what, what we've been doing with all the houses here. Get a couple stripes of clay here. Just a couple of minutes of building makes such a big difference. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, I like that quite a bit more. Um, what I want to do now is like we got this tiny area here. Like it feels like it's big enough. I need to do something with it, but it's too small. To really do anything substantial so we might just build another one of these like market stalls oh i didn't want to break that <laughs> over there uh and just uh, fill in this area a bit with it like one two three four uh, maybe we'll make it come out here and like throw in some bushes here maybe get rid of some of these bushes and put product back there oh the inventory space guys i don't know we, we need a solution to this soon uh, let's go up uh, three, maybe. Oh, no, the white wool. <laughs> uh, I got to set up a sheep farm, guys. Like, we have a sheep farm, but it's not a practical one to use. Oh, we got some. Okay, sweet. All right, we've done orange. We've done red. We've done blue. So maybe green or yellow for this one. Let me figure out the shape of this thing before I actually start putting the wool down. Maybe like that. Well, I guess it should match the counter, right? Yeah. Oh, snappers. Okay, it turned out better than I was expecting, actually. I didn't even think of this, but, like, we have something to look at now when we're walking down the alley here, which is big, like, instead of just looking at the wall. I think that's very important. Uh, so, what do we sell here? We sell watermelon blast, guys. We got the watermelon floor, watermelon stock. We, we're, we're brewing up the watermelon blast here. Yeah. I put like a ring of trap doors up there to kind of look like it's tying the yawning, awning, awning, right? Yeah, awning <laughs> uh, to the wall, right? It's got to connect to it somehow. Um, and then, yeah, that's about it. Okay, so, oh yeah, I wanted to check this out. Let's try dye. I got to get used to like dyeing signs different colors. I'm still living in the old ways, guys. Ooh, that doesn't work. Nope, nope, nope. I've said it before, but I, I really like my inventory system for the ender chest. It's so good. It's like, well, what? I, I just look in here and it's like, okay, choose which one you want to use. <laughs> I think we'll go for beetroot, maybe. Try it out. Let's try grow it just to see what it looks like. Sure. Yeah, okay. And this doesn't block the path either as we walk by, so I think it's good. No, uh oh, we we might be all out of wheat here. We got one more place to check. I like I like never raid this thing. There's got to be some here, right? Uh, yeah, okay, that should be enough. Oh, tough decisions, everybody. The details, the details. Do we keep this here or do we go for this? I think this thematically makes more sense, right? We're trying to sell potions or or drinks. Maybe that's the watermelon blast right there. I think the the little guy looked better though. <laughs> Maybe. I think we'll keep that, though. Uh, uh, and I know, I'm sorry I disappointed a lot of people. I made a bad decision. I, I would switch back to carrots. I, I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, not my proudest moment. Okay, uh, we got a little bit of a space here. Not really enough space for a house, I don't think. So we got to put something here that's kind of small. Uh, and I'm thinking I want to have a spot for llamas, like a, a stable sort of area. And it makes sense. I think they would come up to the, the well to drink, right? Like, this is where you would want to have the llamas. So, yeah, let's just do this. I'm going to make, like, a little feeding trough thing for them here. Actually, let's do it like this. Like that. And then we will put a... Not that. We'll put a, a wood block there. But I want to do it like this. Have uh, this with the straw in, and this one for the water. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Explain? Oh, I know, I know, I, 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 I see it, I see it, I see it, I see it. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, that messed with my head, though. Uh, you, you know what it is? That's a, a stair, so I waterlogged the stair. 
I was kind of planning and hoping to build a house here today as well. Maybe in this spot uh, would be good. Uh, but timing issues on this episode, I think uh, I'll do it off camera and then we'll just check it out afterwards. Um, but uh, yeah, I did get the little stall here for llamas. So we got a stockpile of hay. We got our lead ready to go for them. Fence gates. Now you can't put path blocks under the fences and stuff. That's what I was originally planning on doing, but uh, it doesn't work. So I had to mix in some dirt and stuff here. To, to make it work. <laughs> I think it's fine, right? Uh-huh. Anyways, uh, yeah, let me get to this. Awesome. All right, everybody, check it out. I've been building away here, and we now have a brand new building added to Sandy City. It's a two-story. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's get a couple different angles of it. So it's kind of like a fat T-shaped building, both on the bottom and the top. It's like another T stacked on top of a... A bigger tee below and I think it works I think it's good so I didn't do the interior I got a lot of buildings I need to add interiors to and I'll probably make a episode where I focus on that um, but my plan with this one is I'm gonna use these barrels to store dyes in I think because I don't really have a good uh, like bulk dye storage in my world and I always like run around looking for little scraps here and there it's kind of annoying <laughs> so I want like a big storage spot for it um, and then uh, the thing is with that little T on the top of the building there wasn't really a good way of like adding a ladder or a staircase in here. So I decided to do something kind of interesting. Um, we got the wall going around the city, right? But there's no real way to get up on the wall. So now we have a way up on the wall for the security guards, right? That work at Sandy City. They need to be able to do their patrols and they also need... Time to relax, guys, right? So I built them like an employee's lounge up here. They can get out of the sun and, and relax when they get tired of walking around the wall or something. I don't know. Did something a little different here, too, that I've never tried before. I used scaffolding as a ceiling material, and I actually really like it. I think it's kind of cool. Right? Uh-huh. So that's all done. And then they're also, we got like a little walk-around area for them here so they can go check out the city on their patrol. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And what else? I did do the roof. <laughs> oh, man. You know, you spend half the time building the building, and then you waste another half the time on the roof, right? And it's not even a full roof. It's like it's like a weird-shaped roof. Check this out. It's uh, a very weird roof. Now, keep in mind, it's a desert city, right? So we don't really need to protect against rain, though. We don't really need roofs. The roofs are for sunshine. Protect against the sun. But yeah, we got a lot done on the city here today. It's uh, coming together pretty good. I think maybe we build like a little structure here for our ender pearl thing. And then maybe one or two houses and that's it. We'll, we'll be finished with this. Um, or even just one house and maybe some outdoor thing like like a park. But deserts don't really have parks. So I don't know. A, a desert park of some sort <laughs> would work as well. But yeah, we got this house here. Didn't do a whole lot around here th today, just uh, updated the bushes and stuff, changed some of the trees around, more melon trees in the city. I think I should add one more stall, like one of those market stalls in this corner. Feels like we got a bit of empty space there that needs something. Uh-huh, we got our crates around the city. We updated the blacksmith. This is the area we spent the most time in. And I think we actually, we should probably Add the pathing back here too. That's one thing I gotta do still. Add the pathing. Maybe something over here is needed as well. Uh, maybe a black market corner back here or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, otherwise I think uh, it's coming along pretty good here. Oh, and our elevator. We, we need to build the elevator still. All right, everybody. Well, it's time to wrap it up for today. So let's uh, end our episode here with the comment of the day, which says... Hey, Etho, great video. I was just wondering, is it safe to assume at this point that the recreating the wiki project is a new nexus? And I think by that he means a, a project that's never going to get finished. <laughs> uh, yeah, so th the wiki project. You guys remember that? Uh, we, went, we went to the new terrain for it, started building a room for it, and that's about as far as I got with it. Um, so it was a project I was super excited about. I thought it was a great idea, um, was really looking forward to it, but it became pretty clear to me <laughs> that I was way more excited about it than you guys were, okay, is kind of what it came down to, and I'm not going to spend an insane amount of time on a project 
uh, that you guys aren't all that interested in is is what it boiled down to. So at most, I'll probably finish that one room we started on it and maybe add a couple more just for fun. But uh, the other thing is somebody brought up a, a point that I hadn't considered about it as well. Like the whole idea of the wiki project was to create like a museum for Minecraft to um, kind of show off game mechanics and that kind of thing. And somebody in the comments said, well, isn't that already what you kind of do? <laughs> I would rather see you do it by building new farms and showing off the new game mechanics and farms and stuff in an actual application than in some controlled museum where we already know the outcome and stuff. So I thought that was a good point that I hadn't considered and uh, I ran out of brick here. Uh, and that's a good reason not to continue it as well. Yeah. Anyways. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Thank you for your feedback. If you have any, please leave it in the comments below. I'll check it out. And that's it. Take care. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.